Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Medicine 2.0 Congress, to the second Medicine 2.0 Congress, also known as the World Congress on Social Networking and Web 2.0 Applications in Medicine, Health, Healthcare, and Biomedical Research. I'm happy that you all landed on Mars to improve healthcare on Earth. My name is Gunther Eisenbach. I'm an associate professor here at the University of Toronto and a senior scientist at the Center for Global eHealth Innovation, which is uh, right next door. Um, and I'm the organizer and chair of this meeting. I'm also wearing a hat as the editor of the Journal of Medical Internet Research, which is now the leading peer-reviewed journal on e-health, medical informatics, and health services research, and which is a spo sponsor, a co-sponsor of this conference. One of the most difficult tasks being a chair of this meeting is perhaps uh, that I always, each year, see it as one of my obligations to define or at least to outline what we mean with medicine 2.0 or health 2.0, uh, which seems to, be, seems to be getting more and more difficult each year. Last time I checked, I found about three dozen different three dozen different definitions of what people think health 2.0 or medicine 2.0 is. But I hope that at the end of the two days, you come out of this meeting with a sort of a warm, fuzzy feeling and you have a feel for what it is when we talk about medicine 2.0. As a side note, I should maybe stress that I, I see the terms health 2.0 and medicine 2.0 as being largely interchangeable. So uh, despite these definitional problems, I think what brought us all together here, the kind of overarching theme of medicine 2.0 is I think the recognition that healthcare needs change. No matter what country we're coming from, no matter what healthcare benefits we enjoy, and by the way, there are, there are people from uh, 23 different countries here in this room. So no, no matter what country we're coming from, no matter what healthcare system we are enjoying or suffering from, no matter how we finance healthcare and what percentage of GDP we invest in healthcare, I think what we all have in common that we as patients, as consumers, as healthcare professionals are to a certain degree and becoming increasingly frustrated with the way healthcare is delivered frustrated and impatient with medicine and healthcare, which is often using antiquated processes and technologies. And maybe uh, one reason for that is that we are all part of the Google generation and we're used to getting data, information, answers on the click of a button which seems to work in almost every other industry except healthcare. Of course, there are reasons for that, privacy, etc. cetera. But um, it is incredibly frustrating for us as consumers, as patients, as healthcare professionals, especially for those of us who know that the, the barriers are not of technological nature. There are so many things which are, from a technological point of view, are feasible. The barriers are mostly of organizational nature, cultural nature, political nature. And there's an increasing gap between what's technologically possible and what, what the status quo is. So one possible way of looking at Medicine 2.0 or defining Medicine 2.0 is to see Medicine 2.0 as next generation medicine what it could be, what medicine and healthcare could be, what it should be, and hopefully what it will be in the near future if we all work together. If we are smart, if we re-engineer healthcare using technology and participatory approaches. 
if we re-engineer healthcare using Web 2.0 values and approaches. Now, what, what do I mean with Medicine 2.0 values? And I wrote a paper about Medicine 2.0 last year where I outlined what in my mind are the, the five characteristics of Medicine 2.0 or Health 2.0. And that's participation, openness, collaboration, app mediation, and social networking. And I think these, these five values or characteristics uh, of Medicine 2.0 are the perfect remedies for what healthcare and medicine is suffering from in, in many countries, especially industrialized countries around the world. Uh, and these problems include, for example, a focus on curative medicine, uh, not enough incentives for prevention, not enough incentives to keep people out of the healthcare system, to keep people healthy, to keep people out of hospitals. And guess what? To, to keep people healthy, we need participation. We need user and user partic participation. We need the participation, involvement, and engagement of consumers and patients. And that's one of the values of, of Medicine 2.0, participation. Healthcare around the world suffers in many cases from intransparencies, from hierarchies, and if we look at computer systems, also from proprietary systems, closed systems. Again, the Medicine 2.0 has 2.0 value of openness, sharing data, sharing experiences, share, sharing outcomes uh, provides a possible remedy, remedy to that. Healthcare is often characterized by information silos, inadequate patient access to information. And again, the Medicine 2.0 value of collaboration, interoperability, the idea of patients as partners uh, provides an antidote to that. Healthcare, in, in healthcare, we often deal with intermediaries, information brokers, gatekeepers. On the other side of the equation is the Medicine 2.0 idea of the wisdom of the crowds, bypassing intermediaries, bypassing gatekeepers, bypassing experts, uh, not replacing them, but complementing them with the wisdom of the crowds. And lastly, uh, especially as medic medical informaticians, it's funny that we ha have focused our efforts always on modeling medical information and not modeling and storing relationships between peoples, people. And that's what social networking is all about. We, in social networking, we, what we try to do is storing and modeling relationships within people. And that adds an entirely new dimension to, to what we deem healthcare information. And, and once we have social networks, and social networks are fascinating because they allow us to enable and facilitate collaboration between people they allow collaborative filtering processes, so the identification of relevant and trustworthy information based on what peers are doing. It allows reputation and trust management. It allows viral dissemination of information and applications, uh, which is a possibility which especially excites public health professionals. And you're gonna hear some examples for that at this conference. Uh, using, for example, Facebook to disseminate information, etc. And um, it is a po potentially powerful tool to engage end users and patients in health behavior change applications and, and similar applications. Because the, the common problem many of these fantastic web based behavior change tools suffer from is. The, the problem of attrition or people starting with a high degree of enthusiasm using these kind of systems, but then they drop out, they discontinue using these kind of systems. And I think if you add virtual communities to it, social networking, if you add some sort of peer pressure to people to stay, to, to return to the website, not only peer pressure, but some additional incentives, they find their friends there, they find their peers there, that's a very powerful tool to engage uh, patients.